I do think that we've proven without a doubt, or we've demonstrated without a doubt, that the blast wave itself, which, which is called the primary blast wave, can injure the brain. Uh, we don't know how, and we don't know to what extent, but I think there's been a great deal of very sophisticated preclinical research, and there's clinical evidence uh, from some of our wounded soldiers who uh, were involved in a blast uh, but had no physical contact with their head to any other structure that, uh, that there was a severe brain injury. Um, for me to say much more than that, I think would be so speculative. There's a, uh, there's a, a school of thought that this blast wave affects the blood vessels in the brain and, and causes that, those, that blood vessel circuitry to go haywire and um, spasm uh, such that you wind up with pretty massive uh, uh, sort of bleeds within the skull and potentially within the brain tissue. Um, but again, that's not been established with um, uh, well-controlled clinical trials. Uh, there's a great, great deal of research yet to be done. And I think the real challenge to the research is it's almost unless you can do open field, what we call ordinance injuries, detonations of C4 or what have you in your research population, your animal research population, then you, the best you can hope to do is kind of mimic the blast event with some other kind of model and you know it's every time you do that every time you start modeling I mean you get usually one step further away from what happens in the real world and so you have to interpret your data that way so it's a great challenge